So what exactly is GraphQL? Well, if you are a web developer, I bet you have heard this word before, and you might even know what it means, but I would say that GraphQL is something that a lot of beginners are scared of. This perspective kind of makes sense to me because beginners decide to learn how to make an API usually by starting using REST as an architecture, and GraphQL kind of challenges a beginner's notion of how to structure an API. Also, the problems that GraphQL solve aren't really familiar to beginners. Therefore, this might cause many beginners to just question what is the point of actually learning GraphQL. But to be honest, like any other technology, you should do your own research before using it. However, in this video, I'll try to explain exactly what GraphQL is and why you might want to use it in your next application so that if you guys are interested you guys can actually do more research and learn technology and acquire this skill that is very in demand in the market right now. So in simple terms GraphQL is a query language that describes an API request. The important distinction that a lot of beginners don't understand is the fact that GraphQL isn't a technology, library, or a database, but rather it is actually a query language that exists as a layer between your frontend and your backend, allowing you to expose the data that you sent from your server to your client in the format described by a GraphQL API. So the frontend will always be communicating with GraphQL and the backend will always also be communicating with GraphQL making it so that the frontend doesn't really need to know a lot about the backend and the backend doesn't really need to know a lot about the frontend. And the thing that connects both of them is the GraphQL API that sets a certain standard for what kind of data it accepts. Now, I know a lot of that is kind of confusing because it was very confusing for me when I started learning GraphQL. However, in this video, I wanna go over a little bit of the basics of GraphQL by first of all, explaining what exactly is a GraphQL API. So a GraphQL API is usually divided into its schema and its resolvers. The schema is not the same as a database schema that you might have heard in the past because GraphQL is completely independent from your database. The schema is basically a way to describe how your API will work, including what kind of data it will receive, um, what kind of data it will send and what kind of data it will mutate. This is where you will describe all of the types that you will create in your GraphQL API. So for example, if you wanna have users in your website and you want the GraphQL API to um, add users, delete users, change users, however you want, you need to create a type called user and put it inside of your schema. Every schema has two required types, the query and the mutation type. The query type is used for fetching and reading data from your API, while the mutation type is used for creating, updating, or deleting data from your API. When a schema has both, it allows CRUD operations in your app. In order to get an idea of how this works, let's create a GraphQL API that reads and mutates data related to a user. First, we have to write the schema and create the query and mutation types. Then, we create the user type that we're going to use. For each type, we can add fields with different types related to the user. GraphQL has some basic types, like a string, an int, a boolean, and many others. But if we wanted to create a new type and nest it inside of another type, we can. For example, let's create another type called job. And that type will include information about, um, for example, the job name of the user, the position, and the salary. Now, if we want to create a field in each user where we specify what job they have, we can just set the return type for the field to be job, and that will tell GraphQL that um, when you ask for a user's job, it should return all of the information related to the job type. The reason why we describe all of this in this way is so that GraphQL can be very strict with the format of the data it handles. We can even make some fields required if we want to by adding an explanation point at the end of the return type. Now that we have the actual type for the user, let's just add a query field to our query type. Our first query will return a list of all users. We can do this by giving it a name such as get all users and setting the return type to be a list of users by adding a little square bracket around the type user. We can also make a, a simpler query, which basically just fetches an individual user. But to do that, we do need the ID of a user because that's how you usually do it with an API. So we'll have to pass in an argument to this query and say that for this query, we also need to get the ID from the front end. And this, it's a very important functionality in GraphQL and you do it this way. Now to create some mutations, we, we can just do something very similar. For example, 
let's create three different types of mutations that allows us to create, update and delete a user. Each field will require a different piece of information to execute properly. For example, to create a user, we need information about the user sent from the front end to then send to our backend so that the backend can do something with it, such as adding it to our database. So we will need to create an input type specifying what we will need from the front end to pass this argument so that the mutation is fulfilled. We can do the same for all of the other mutations too, um, depending on what they need specifically. Now we're technically done with our very simple API, but you might be wondering, how does this even work? Because we just wrote a bunch of different types and now we should expect this to actually work in a real world app. Well, like I mentioned, GraphQL is just a layer in between the front end and the back end. What we did here is we specified how our API will work by using the GraphQL language. Treat every mutation and query almost as if it is like an endpoint in a normal REST API. What you need to do now is to write the resolver functions in your backend layer. There are many libraries that facilitates the process and I do have like extensive tutorials and series um, showing you how it actually works using uh, a language like Node.js. But for this video, this is basically it because this was just a brief overview of what GraphQL is and I really hope it at least inspired you to take a look at the technology. I remember I was very scared back when I was starting to learn this, but now I see it isn't that complicated when you lay it out in very simple terms and I hope I did that to you. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting twice a week and I would massively appreciate it. And I see you guys next time.